Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is November 17. Today, as we continue our daily Bible reading, we see Jesus being taken from the garden where he has been arrested and then taken to be put on a mock trial before Pilate and before some of the religious leaders. Trial before Pilate is the heading that we see in today's reading because the religious leaders, after having conducted this mock trial of Jesus themselves, are now going to seek Roman support. Pilate is a Roman governor, and they need Pilate's approval to actually be able to kill Jesus. So that's where our scene takes us today. I want to draw your attention in the beginning of our reading today to the gray portion, the commentary section from our editor in today's reading. It is found on page 1470. Because this first paragraph here gives us a little bit of background of why the Jews religiously are involving the Romans politically in this whole process. The Jews have condemned Jesus to death on the basis of their own religious laws against blasphemy in response to Jesus' claim to be the Son of God. But the Sanhedrin, that's the ruling body of the Jews, has no power to execute condemned prisoners without approval of the Roman government. Yet clearly such a pagan government will not regard a charge of blasphemy with the same degree of seriousness as to the Jews. This makes little difference to them. Therefore, more appropriate charges will have to be laid before the governor. Being politically astute, the Jewish leaders will accuse Jesus of sedition in allegedly urging refusal to pay taxes and in claiming to be the king of the Jews. And we'll see in today's reading that they're going to really put a lot of stock in the fact that because Jesus claims to be king, he, has set, he is setting himself up against Caesar, who, of course, is the emperor over Rome. And that's the ground that they're going to take in order to try to get the Roman government's support in putting Jesus to death. So at the beginning of today's reading, Jesus is taken to Pilate, we're told they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, who is the governor in charge of the Jews in Jerusalem at this time. And Pilate asks them, what charges are you bringing against this man? And rather than answer the question pointedly, they simply say, if he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate says, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. And so we get an indication here, once again, that the story is not about the Jewish leaders, nor is it about Pilate, or even about the crucified Christ nearly as much as it is about God telling his story and making his story come to fruition, which does involve the crucifixion of his one and only son, his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. So then Pilate is going to begin to question Jesus, and he begins by asking him, are you the king of the Jews? This is the accusation that's been made. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are, a, you are then a king, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Now, Pilate is already frustrated with these people. So he asks, and I think sincerely, what is truth? I find no basis for a charge against him, will be Pilate's conclusion as he takes Jesus out before the people. Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Well, when more discussion takes place and Pilate finds out more about Jesus, he learns that Jesus is a Galilean. So he immediately says, well, Herod is over Galilee. I'm going to send Jesus out of my palace over to Herod. Let him deal with this. It was kind of Pilate's way of trying to get out of it completely. But Herod questions Jesus, and Jesus will not respond at all to Herod. And so mockingly, Herod and his men put a, a robe on Jesus, and they send him back 
to Pilate, having found no reason for accusation against him. In the meantime, Pilate's wife has come to him and given him a warning saying, have nothing to do with this man, Jesus. I've suffered much in a dream because of him, sort of implying he is an innocent man and I don't want you to be involved. And so Pilate then begins to seek to release Jesus and everything he tries, he tries to placate the crowd. He tries to keep them satisfied and also protecting himself but he doesn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. He has heard the warning of his wife. He himself believes Jesus is an innocent man, that he is not guilty of the charges that have been brought, and so he seeks to release Jesus. Now we're told it's an unusual custom of the day that a prisoner will be released, and so Pilate knows it's simply out of envy that they have delivered Jesus up to him, and so he says, do you want me to deliver Jesus to you? Do you want me to release him or Barabbas, who was a known murderer, a known insurrectionist and killer? But the people, as they are stirred up by the religious leaders, anticipating this very question to come about, shout out, give us Barabbas. Can you believe that? They would rather have a murderer than admit that they may have been wrong about the Son of God. Pilate is stunned. He doesn't want to release Barabbas. He wants to release to them Jesus. And so he says to them, when they demand Barabbas instead of Jesus be released, what then do you want me to do with Jesus, who is called the King of the Jews? And the crowd shouts over and over again, crucify him. And Pilate keeps coming back saying, why? What evil has he done? I find no basis for a charge against him. And over and over, the people keep calling out for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate even goes back and forth, and you can see his physical movements here as he goes in to speak to Jesus. He comes back out to the crowd. He goes back into Jesus. He comes back out to the crowd, and you can see in his physical movement this unrest that's going through his mind. He knows that he has no basis for charge against Jesus, and yet the people are demanding that Jesus be crucified. So Jesus' crucifixion being demanded, Pilate tries to satisfy the crowd saying, I tell you what, I will punish him and then I'll release him. But the crowd continues to demand his crucifixion. Some of the accusers plait a crown of thorns and press it down upon his head and start mocking Jesus and spitting upon him. Pilate presents Jesus to the crowd as their king because he claimed to be the king of the Jews. But then the crowd very subtly and very uh, cleverly, I should say, starts to make the accusation, this man is not our king, our king is Caesar. And they start to say to Pilate, any man who is a friend of Jesus is not a friend of Caesar because he sets himself up as king. And so now they've really put Pilate in a difficult situation. They're playing on Pilate's loyalty to the Roman government and his loyalty to the king. It is at this point that Pilate brings out water and he washes his hands in front of the people as though to say, I am innocent of this man's blood. I am washing my hands to show you I have no part in this. I want no part of his blood. At this time, the crowd interestingly shouts, his blood be upon us and on our children. I've always found that fascinating. Isn't it ironic that the crowd who's shouting for the crucifixion of the Messiah actually says, his blood be upon us and on our children, not knowing that ultimately that's what will save them when his blood, the blood of the sacrificed Passover lamb, is applied to their lives and to the lives of their children. So Barabbas is released. Jesus is led out. He is carrying his own cross to Golgotha, the place of the skull, where he will be crucified. Simon of Cyrene is appointed to carry the cross because Jesus falls down under its weight. <coughs> Excuse me. And there are women weeping for Jesus. And he's saying to them, don't weep for me. Weep for all of these who were so badly mistaken. So Jesus is ultimately crucified. Isn't it great to know that God would go to such extents to make it possible for you and I to be saved. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet 
and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.